Conrad Steiner, Doctor of Medicine. Tonight's story has the title, A Time for Sleep. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. And the qualities of the worthy physician are three. The eye of an eagle, the heart of a lion, the hand of a woman. Our actual case history tonight concerns the field of anesthesiology. The object in point, an old gold watch, once the property of a great teacher in the field of chemistry, Dr. Friedrich Zimmler. The case in point, the present owner of that watch, a 60-year-old professor of chemistry, Dr. Gertrude McDowell. Forty years ago, when Professor McDowell studied with Dr. Zimmler, he gave her the watch as a token of trust the trust of an esteemed teacher in a gifted pupil. For her entire life, Professor McDowell has devoted herself to fulfilling that trust. Honored by scientists, revered by her students, she is on the threshold of great achievement. Morning. Say, Professor, did you see this? Huh? Computations for me? Yes, they're right over here. <clears throat> hey, listen. Genius is a rare gift, and we are brought face to face with it. Our reactions go from doubt to mockery, but finally to awe. That's a beautiful piece of work you've done, Collins. Very nice. Thanks. And in such a mood of awed reverence, we stand before the genius of Gertrude McDowell. The American Physical Chemist, the publication of the first in her series of papers on the atomic structure of crystals, already sets at the very start a standard of research for all chemists to aim. You won't do any serious if you don't take your nose out of that nonsense. Take a look at that. Catch yourself on the back. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Weintraub. Yes. Today, at your office, six o'clock. It's, it's after five now. Yes. I suppose I can. Very well. Davis had her on propofail uracil for three months with adequate digitalis medication. She's in temporary remission. She's having increasing difficulty breathing. Thyrocardiac, toxic nodular goiter projecting substernally. With a severe respiratory embarrassment, the goiter is pushing the trachea way over. Normally, a thyroid operation doesn't present a serious problem, but when it's complicated, as it is in your case, by a heart condition and by such factors as hardening of the arteries and high blood pressure, well, frankly, Professor, 
a risk does exist. Dr. Weintraub here wants me to go into the hospital tomorrow. Operation. Thyroidectomy. Yes, we've gone over your case, Professor. You're an anesthesiologist? Yes, I'm the doctor who will administer your anesthetic. How do you intend to go about it while I'm asleep? Well, we're going to put you to sleep very gently and very safely. How? An intravenous anesthetic. What kind? Well, you're a chemist, Professor. It'll be an intravenous barbiturate. We'll use it for the induction of anesthesia. From there on, after you're asleep, we'll use adequate agents and methods as indicated. When I'm asleep? Yes. But if you make a mistake? Please believe me. Every precaution will be taken. Fact still remains. I'm an anesthetic risk. I might die. Yes, Professor McDowell, you might. But with the correct choice of anesthetic agents and safe anesthetic management during surgery, that's a very remote possibility. Still a possibility. And that's why you should enter the hospital tomorrow to assure yourself of the adequate rest you've not been able to take. In your condition, rest is imperative. Time do you wish me to check into the hospital? Any time before four o'clock. Very well. Professor Mack. Oh, Collins, this is a pleasant surprise. Come right in. Professor Johnson told me you had dinner guests, but I couldn't let that. Well, oh, they called. They, they couldn't make it. Well, it's just as well. I have a lot of work to do anyway. Uh, sit down. I'll, I'll fix you some dinner. And, and you can look over at Professor Johnson's uh, paper. It's on the tobacco mosaic virus or something. Oh, poor old Johnson, you know. <laughs> He's a rough chemist, 15 years behind the time. I only just wanted to see you for a minute. I've got to get back. Oh, sit down. You work too hard anyway. Come on, relax. Well, it isn't work. Uh, that is, I have a date. Collins, you've got a lady friend. Well, I'm working on it. Isn't it odd? I never thought of you as having time for... Oh, I'm very happy about it. it, it it's so nice, but... Oh, just don't stand there. Go get her. I can't have my most brilliant young chemist going up with just anybody, you know. Well, it isn't that kind of a date, Professor Mack. It's at her parents' house. <laughs> you see... I'm... Well, I've asked her to marry me, and I've got to clear it with her folks at dinner. Oh, I'm, I'm so happy. Who is she? It's, uh, Eleanor Johnson. The Vassar Johnson's daughter? <laughs> well, he's still a rotten chemist. Oh, but they're going to have a good one in the family now. Congratulations. When is it to be? About six weeks. What I wondered, Professor Mack, was, well... You know, I don't have any family, and well, you're the only one who's ever taken any interest in me, helped me, and what I wondered was whether you would be... I... I'm very happy to be your family, Colin. And it's not all funny, Johnson. Oh, that you... you just leave him to me. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Mack. Well, good night. Oh, Colin. Just a minute. I, uh, I won't be at the lab tomorrow. I, uh, 
want me at the hospital early in the morning. So soon? Evidently. And I may not be back at work for some time. I'll take care of things. Uh, you will uh, check the proofs on the papers, the third series, won't you? And I, uh, I want you to take a swatch. Professor Mack, I couldn't accept a thing like that. Take it. You make me very happy. Take care of yourself. Good night. Goodbye. Toxic thyroid patient, the secretion from the thyroid gland is poured into the system in such quantities that the metabolism of the tissues is speeded up way beyond the normal rate. As a result, the patient shows marked symptoms of irritability, nervousness, feels warm, and the heart rate is increased tremendously, not infrequently up to 120 or 140 beats per minute or more. This alteration in body metabolism increases the risk as far as anesthesia and surgery are concerned. However, with the newer drugs and with the proper period of rest, even the most seriously ill patient can usually be prepared for surgery. After a few days of rest and sedation, the patient's apprehension and anxiety are greatly relieved. When anemia is present, as in this case, transfusions are indicated. Perhaps the most important visit to the patient is made by the anesthesiologist on the evening before the operation. Not only does he take a final check on the patient's condition, but he further puts the patient's mind at ease. Fear, tension, nervousness are among the worst obstacles an anesthesiologist has to face. An atmosphere of ease on the part of the doctor, pleasant conversation, a few simple explanations of what is in store for the patient. All these help to calm the patient down. And then finally, the patient is ready for the first step into that sleep during which all pain will be banished. Get a good night's rest. I don't need your help to swallow a capsule, thank you. It's orders. You mean to get rid of you after to swallow this thing? That's right. Pleasure. When the patient is brought into the operating room, the anesthesiologist appraises the effectiveness of the preoperative medication. The patient is drowsy but can still be roused. I know you. Anesthesiologist starts the intravenous infusion, glucose and saline. Then he reaches for the syringe containing the intravenous anesthetic. The anesthetic is injected slowly into the intravenous tubing.
Now I'm going to ask you to count slowly. One, two, three. The anesthetic is carried by the patient's bloodstream and produces its anesthetic effect on the vital brain centers initially. The depth of anesthesia is determined by the anesthesiologist, depending on the presence or absence of certain reflexes, rate and depth of respiration, pulse rate, and so on. A muscle relaxing agent is administered to relax the patient's muscles and facilitate the introduction of the endotracheal tube. With the required relaxation achieved, the patient is ready for the endotracheal. The endotracheal tube is inserted into the patient's windpipe. It relieves the tracheal obstruction and ensures a patent airway. by administering additional amounts of the intravenous anesthetic along with the assistance of certain gases such as nitrous oxide. Under all circumstances, an abundant supply of oxygen is maintained. Initially, the patient's respiration is assisted by the anesthesiologist and continued until the patient returns to normal respiratory action. the patient is tilted in a position that assures the surgeon maximum ease. Okay to start? I guess she's about ready as she's going to be. Her pulse is slightly irregular, but no worse than it was last night when I took it. Nice. And so it begins. The skilled mind of the surgeon guiding obedient, sure hands. About one hour later, the hands will stop, their healing work done. And for that hour, pain is banished, even the thought of pain.
The advance in medical instrumentation employing modern developments in electronics provide the anesthesiologist with precision methods of determining the efficiency of the patient's heart action. Such an instrument is the electrocardioscope, which visibly shows any regular or irregular action of the heart, which are not always detectable simply by palpating the patient's pulse. Today, because of improved preoperative preparation and safer anesthetic management during the operation, the incidence of such risks as cardiac standstill has been reduced to a minimum. As is usual nowadays, the operation proceeds smoothly, and the patient is safe and free from pain. of the anesthesiologist's control that within a very short time after the surgeon has finished, the effects of anesthesia wear off slowly. The patient comes back to consciousness. Awareness, however dim, returns. In the post-anesthesia recovery room, the anesthesiologist and specially trained nursing personnel carefully follow the patient's general condition until full consciousness has all but returned. Blood pressure and pulse stabilize, and the danger of any immediate post-operative complications are reduced to a minimum. The anesthesiologist makes regular daily visits to check on the patient's condition. Professor McDowell? Professor McDowell? Professor? How do you feel? It's all over. Over. You did fine. Even better than we thought. Anesthesiologist today, like Dr. Williams, is a far cry from the anesthetist of only a few short years ago. He needs a specialized knowledge of pharmacology, chemistry, and physiology. With its multiple techniques, its many different mechanical and electronic aids, anesthesia today requires the skill of specially trained doctors who, after their internship, spend an additional five years training in their specialty with final certification by the American Board of Anesthesiology. There are today 192 hospitals certified for resident training. In these hospitals, a total of 1,073 doctors are training in anesthesiology. More and more of them are joining the ranks of those who give to others the comforting knowledge that surgery, however extensive, need only be a short sleep, safe, without fear, and without pain. <laughs> 